All right, fine. Let's talk about Ravi. Shalom, Mabahai, and welcome to everyone. Uh, I've avoided talking about Ravi Zacharias for, well, a number of reasons. First, I wanted things to calm down a bit. Accusations against a Christian, any Christian, but particularly one who was somewhat famous in Christian circles, and especially one who has recently died, things are going to get a little bit hot. And I want this channel to be popular. I'm not going to make any apologies for that. But I also don't want to get cancelled either. And secondly, a little bit more selfishly, you're not watching, you're not subscribing, you're not donating, and uh, I'm not exactly doing this for my health. But whatever, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so if you're unaware, Ravi Zacharias was arguably one of the most famous Christian apologists of the 21st century so far. He was an international speaker. He had his own radio show called Let My People Think, which nowadays that title seems kind of ironic. Most people don't want to think. And Ravi also ran a humanitarian ministry. Uh, unfortunately, Ravi Zacharias also owned several massage parlors and frequently engaged and, in some cases, coerced employees into having sex with him. There were some initial allegations against him in 2017, uh, but his ministry quickly brushed them off. But after, after Ravi Zacharias died in 2020, that's when the floodgates opened and multiple victims came forward. So I want to talk about what can we learn from this? And after thinking about this for a bit, I've come up with four things. First, no one is beyond the grip of sin. Right, that's plainly evident in 2 Samuel when we learn about King David when he sinned with Bathsheba. Look, I was born a sinner and I will die a sinner. Ravi Zacharias was born a sinner and he died a sinner. And by the way, even if every single one of those sexual misconduct allegations were false, Ravi Zacharias still would have died a sinner. Billy Graham, who is highly respected, he was a sinner right up until the moment he died. We are all under the curse of sin. And even though our sins are forgiven by the blood shed by our Savior, even though we as believers will tend to sin less, we never become sinless. Not until we reach heaven. My second point is that no one is beyond the saving grace of Jesus. We tend to think that the blood of Christ is enough to forgive the worst things that we've done but no worse than that. To put it another way, Jesus saved me. But Hitler? Osama bin Laden? The guy I didn't vote for in the election? The co-worker that took all the credit for my work? God can't save them. They are beyond hope. Did I hit a nerve there? Ravi could have repented if he wanted to. He could have been restored by Jesus if he wanted to be. And I think Ravi knew that. Does this mean that Ravi Zacharias was not really saved? I, I hope it doesn't mean that. I know I, for one, am going to die with character defects that I don't even know about. Much less working on to say nothing of having any victory over. I've got sins that I've forgotten about. How can I possibly confess them? Now, this is only me talking, okay? But based on my understanding of the scriptures, it is Christ's blood that saves. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's not 
our confession. It's not even our repentance. It is his blood that saves. Now, you are certainly free to disagree with me in the comments. And if you make a Bitcoin donation to this channel, I might even read your comment. Like I said, I'm not doing this for my health. My third point is everyone needs accountability. Every Christian needs trusted Christian friends, not just to tell them the truth that what they're doing is wrong, but to gently help them and restore them. People tend to forget that, that last part, you know? People love to hold other people accountable, don't they? They love to speak truth to power. They just can't seem to speak the truth in love. Their motivation for holding others accountable is usually for the sole purpose of accusing, exposing, humiliating, punishing, and ultimately destroying other people. And if you are that kind of person, do us both a favor, okay? Go work in human resources. The church has enough judgmental people already. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, let's look at that phrase. Let's look at that word accountable. It's the same root word as accounting or accountant. Let me ask you, what do you call an accountant that records the debits but not the credits? What do you call an accountant that records the debt but fails to report the income? I would call them unemployed. Real accountability considers both the good and the bad. And that brings me to my fourth point. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's a common phrase, but it's true. Yes, the messenger had his flaws, as we all do, but Ravi's message was nonetheless sound. Let me ask you this. What if I told you that Nike makes terrible sneakers? You would want to know why I feel that way, right? And you might ask me, oh, did, did you buy a pair of Nikes and, and they wore out quickly? No. Oh, well, uh, did you buy a pair and, and maybe they weren't very comfortable? No. Uh, all right, well, did you try on a pair and, and maybe they didn't fit right? No. Well, then, why do you say Nike makes terrible sneakers? Well, the guy at Foot Locker was really rude to me. So what? The salesperson may have been rude to me, but that doesn't say anything about the actual product that I was thinking of buying. Well, thankfully, there are a lot of great salespeople, or we would call them evangelists, out there. But there's even better news. We can buy direct. When Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. And that means we can now approach God ourselves directly. We have his word in the Bible that we can read on our own and develop our own relationship with Jesus. If you are discouraged by Ravi's sexual misconduct, learn from that. Take it as a reminder to put your trust in Christ and not in people. People will let you down, usually at the time you need them most. And let me be clear, I am not condoning, I am not excusing, any of Ravi's sins. But when I listened to Ravi on the radio, my faith was strengthened. And when I get to heaven, I will thank Ravi for that. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.